um, are all within the same subnet. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. And um, if you look at, I know you probably can't tell, but it's 150.186, whatever, and the, and, and the flag is the Venezuela flag. So I thought this was kind of interesting. And the result is it's Huawei ET523. Well, well, I want to figure out what that is. Well, it's the Echo Life IP phone. Okay. So someone has a whole bunch of these phones public facing to the internet. So let's check out what they have. Oh. See, this is a good example where we had a 200 OK. So it says, yes, you can view the page, but it's asking for a password. And I couldn't, so I, you know, what's the default password for a Huawei ET523? I don't know, but I found that the default for most Huawei devices is, I don't know, password or something. So put it in and see what happens. And again, these things never work on the first time, or they do. I'll scroll through these just to show you the whole screen, but yeah, this is the entire configuration for the phone. A um, couple of interesting things here. One would be um, the URL for the firmware upgrades. So if you want to change that and upload some rogue firmware to them, you can certainly do that if you wanted to. Or you could do stupid things like change the ringtones and other things like that. <laughs> It turns out that this is some technology corporation in, in Venezuela and if you go to their home page there's smiling Hugo Chavez all over the page. So if you want to mess with him, you know, go for it. <laughs> and well, notice I didn't block out any of the IP addresses. So, I mean they're right there for you. <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to break the law. I'm just showing you something. Okay, this is my favorite one and so I saved it for last. Uh, but the title was kind of boring, Infrastructure Exploitation. That sounds kind of boring. So I changed the title. <laughs> Some of you may, uh, I did a talk up in the sky boxes on, on Friday and, and the talk was just about this section. So, and I think you, you, mo the, the, those people would agree that I didn't really oversell the, you know, the title for this section because I want, you'll see what happens. So I was running across a number of Cisco devices and this, I was doing a random search. I wasn't looking for anything specific. And I found one of these, again, it's another Cisco web interface. And so, well, let's just go right for level 15. Yeah. And I, I, I did uh, white out some of the things on here because this was a, at the time, this was a open problem with this, pro you know, company. Um, show IP route, and this, there's a long page of this, and I ran a show BD, uh, um, some other commands, the running config, and so I'm running through these commands, and when I get to um, show CDP neighbors and I know I blanked out the device IDs but the URL was very I interesting and, and the, because it said uh, it, was a, it was a telephone, it was an ISP. And um, so there, you can see here that there's a number of uh, 3750 switches and then there's a Cisco 7606 which is the core router for the ISP and they were, they were all open. Yeah. So I looked up the IP address and it turns out that this was an ISP in Florida, I'll say that. So all these devices were wide open. Uh, contained in the configurations were VLAN IDs for their internal ISP network, hotels, condominiums, apartments, convention center, public backbone, all this stuff. So I'll talk very briefly about disclosure because I don't do disclosure. I'm not, I don't search for bugs and vulnerabilities and things like that. But I thought, when I came across this one, I thought this is kind of important. So I wrote a one line, I, I looked up the uh, security contact for the ISP and I wrote more or less a one line um, email to the security contact and it was something like, I mean, how do you tell, how do you tell them what you did without, you know, implicating yourself? So I said something like, um, the following IP addresses appear to allow unauthenticated access to devices on your network. I get an email the next day, very gracious, pretty much saying thank you, you saved our shit. 
and offering me money. I didn't ask for money. I didn't say, hey, I'm going to hack your shit unless you pay me. I didn't say that. They offered me money, so I thought that was kind of cool. So he said, can, can, can we call you? And again, this is where your Admiral Akbar alarm is going off, right? <laughs> it's a trap, right? I mean, and so, and I'm, I'm just a, I don't do disclosure, so I'm just kind of like, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I called them. <laughs> and uh, the guy was very nice. He, he was a younger guy. This, was a, this, is, this is not a big ISP. This is a small regional ISP. And uh, they were very gracious about what had happened. He just kind of know how I found these devices. And I didn't go into Shodan, but I did say that um, I do research on web banners, which I do. And, um, I was just, you know, doing research on specific in information and web banners, which is what I was doing, and I just came across their devices. I wasn't specifically looking for their ISP, and he, I don't think he really understood what I was telling him, but, <laughs> and he explained that, that they recently added these devices to their network, and that the guys who, you know, installed them obviously didn't disable the web interface or something like that, excuse me, and uh, asked for my address. So, again, the alarm is going off. So I talked to him on the phone and, you know, but now he wants my address because he wants to send me the check. So I gave him my address. <laughs> I will say that I haven't gotten anything in the mail. Not only not the check, but I haven't gotten like anything, you know, legal, whatever. And they did close off the problem. They did shut off their web interfaces, so their devices aren't exposed anymore. Um, but what I will tell you is that with the information I had and with the access that I had, could I, could I have routed any or all of their traffic to a third-party destination and then write back to them and then just sniffed all their traffic and totally owned all their customers? Absolutely, I could have. So I don't think it's unfair to say that, I mean, really could have owned this ISP. Um, so there, I mean, yeah. A few other small examples and, and just, and then we'll, let me do on time, 37, okay. General observations. So I did some searches on Shodan. This is just for interesting data. So I searched for IS 5.0, and we know that it's Windows 2000. There's a lot of them out there. So, you know, 306, this is a couple months old, but 362,000, IS 4.0. See, now we're getting older. Now we're going back into the 90s. Not still, almost 10,000. Well, 3.0. You see where this is going, right? <laughs> 381, IS 2.0. 42, does anybody know, does anybody know what IS 1.0 maps to? It's like Windows NT 3.51 maybe or something like that. It's like 1995, 94-ish. <laughs> wow. If you go to these web pages, I mean, they look like they were made in 95 and never touched since. So, I mean, they may not be used. This is more of just fun for you, just to. What's that? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Let me show you one more example before I, before I go into the conclusions. This is another fun example. This is just, you've all seen uh, the Google hacking, viewing webcams and stuff like that. Every six months the news media re rediscovers the story and plays it on your local news and thinks it's something new. And it isn't. Um, what I want you to do, this is just one small side note. So, by the way, all the pan and tilt features work on this one. <laughs> These ladies were diligently working at their computers and I was like trying to get their attention and they... <laughs> they wouldn't bite, they wouldn't bite. So here's a good example of, of what I mentioned. Of if, if you don't understand the characters, I think, is this, I think this is Japanese. If you don't know what this means, 
you know, you can typically, the taskbar will tell you what it, it's because it's typically in English. And in, in, in this case it does. So this comes out to snapshot, so like if you wanted to take a snapshot of the whatever screen is on there right now, and then a client.html which isn't terribly useful to you. The second point about this slide is that I'm viewing this web page in Firefox. And while many people still use Internet Explorer, I don't know why you would, but you might want to, I do use something called IE View or there's several different versions of it that allow you to view, you know, view Internet Explorer in Firefox. So let's take a look at this and see that there's actually something different here. We actually have a third option. Uh, so we actually have snapshot, client and setup, .conf setup config which was not actually viewable in Firefox. Very interesting. So this is set what happens if we go to setup config? Well we can pretty much do anything we want. So you want to, and, and this again another example of if you don't understand the language, mouse over and it will tell you these are all the things you can do. Security, system, network, wireless, I mean whatever, wide open. Okay, just some general conclusions about Shodan. We've got about 10 minutes left. Shodan aggregates a significant amount of information that's not already of widely available. Could you, could you go home and do something like this? Absolutely, you could do it. But it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of resources. So someone's already done it for you. Um, it does allow for some passive vulnerability analysis. If we're looking for a certain version of software, we can say, hey, um, we can search for that and actually know with some degree of, of confidence that that IP address is running that software without ever even touching it. Um, is this going to totally take over the world? No, it's not going to, but this is, a, this is something new for penetration testers. It's something that you can do to add to your toolbox to explore, to see what other data is out there. And I think it's going to help shape the path for future vulnerability assessments. Um, John uh, Matterly is the uh, creator of Shodan and I'll have him come up here if he's willing to answer a few questions if you have them for him. These are the guys who wrote the add-ons. People always ask about slides so here you go. They're not there yet but they will be really soon. There's a site called scribed.com. I put all my slides from all my presentations on there so scribed.com slash the pres98. Uh, there's some earlier versions of it but this, this particular slide deck will be on there uh, probably by tomorrow. So if you want the slides, there you go. We will save the last ten minutes for questions. Um, I will try to repeat them so that everybody can hear them. Um, and thank you. <laughs>